In this episode, we're going to compare two communication protocols that are commonly used in embedded systems. I2C and SPI are both used in embedded systems to transfer data serially over short distances. However, both protocols have advantages and disadvantages that we need to consider before using them in a specific application. When it comes to the number of lines used, I2C uses only two communication lines, while SPI uses four. As you can see in the diagram, regardless of the number of slave devices, the I2C protocol still uses only two lines. But with SPI protocol, as the number of slave devices increases, more slave select lines are used. If there are multiple slave devices, I2C would very quickly become a clear winner over SPI. I2C uses the SCL line for clock signal and the SDA line for data signal. In this case, only a single line is used to transfer data, which makes I2C a half duplex protocol. With SPI, there are four lines used for SCK, MOSI, MISO, and SS. The SCK line contains a clock signal, while the SS line, or slave select line, is used to select the slave device with which the master would like to communicate. You might also see CS or chip select in place of the slave select. The MOSI line is used to transfer data from the master to the slave devices, while the MISO line is being used by the slave devices to transfer data to the master device. In terms of speed, data transfer in SPI is faster than I2C. Aside from the fact that SPI is full duplex, data rates with SPI can go beyond 10 megabits per second, while in I2C, the fastest standard mode is only up to 3.4 megabits per second. But another disadvantage with SPI is that it can only have one master device, while I2C can have multiple master devices. However, communication through the I2C protocol is typically more complicated than with SPI. Here I have the BMP280 breakout board from Adafruit. The BMP280 is a pressure plus temperature sensor that supports both I2C and SPI. To show some differences between I2C and SPI protocols, I will connect two BMP280 breakout boards to the Adafruit Metro in I2C and SPI arrangements. As you can see in the schematic diagram, the SPI protocol requires more pins than the I2C implementation. Using I2C, there are only two pins used to connect both of the BMP280 breakout boards to the Adafruit Metro. However, the disadvantage of using I2C in this case is that the BMP280 device has only two available addresses. This means that we can only connect two BMP280 breakout boards via I2C. Using SPI, we can share the clock and data pins between sensors and just need to have an available digital I.O. on the Metro to act as a slave select for as many sensors as we'd like to connect. If you want to test this BMP280 sensor, you can download the library provided by Adafruit. However, the code is only optimized for using a single BMP280 breakout board. So, if you want to use two of the BMP280 sensors, then you'll need to modify the code. I hope this provided a little insight into the differences between I2C and SPI to help you decide which protocol you will use in your next project. I hope you enjoyed this video from DigiKey. Thanks for watching.